Mogo, 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 Modern Goldfish. Hi friends, this is Kenna with Modern Goldfish and today I'm going to show you how I make my wands. So I start with a quarter inch oak dowel that gives me a really great support for the wand. It's springy and sturdy and these are 12 inches long um, and I use hot glue. I start at the top and then just use gravity and the tip of the wand to create the shapes and forms that I'm looking for. So I start with the blade of the wand and once I get a, a few inches um, onto there, I put it in the water and what that does is it sort of freezes the, the glue in place. Um, it is still hot on the inside and so I'm able to pull um, down with the tip but then also it's cool enough on the outside that I can actually form it with my hands if I need to. So I do use a high um, wattage glue gun. I burned through a lot of the glue guns that you'll get at craft stores um, and found that I needed a beefier one. So, and I prefer this tip, the, um, the pointier tip. And what it does is it actually helps me create really organic structures. Um, I'm looking for valleys and ridges in the shape here on the wand and um, that tip gives it to me. And so you can see I'm, I can use my hands to create, you know, like a higher mountain um, ridge there. And I just dry it off and continue. So I've got the blade of the wand the way that I want and now I'm going to work on the handle. So AdTech is the glue gun of my choice, or glue sticks of my choice rather. I have tried so many different kinds and I've found that the AdTech glue sticks just give me a, you know, they're reliable, um, they're consistent, and I, I love the, um, the way that they, they work. Um, I don't use any other. So what I'm doing here is I'm just building up. Um, I know that the handle needs to be a little bit thicker than the blade of the wand, and what I'm doing is I'm just adding, and I'm doing some swirling while I go. And again, that's just giving me the, um, the structure that I'm looking for. And there's always gonna be little wisps of glue gun strings, spider webs, um, and you just pick those off as you go. So I know that I'm gonna have the pommel of the handle is going to be thick as well as the, the hilt. And I know that I'm going to, I wanna shape this so it seems natural when someone picks it up that it was just meant for them. And some people are right-handed, some people are left-handed. What I'm gonna do is make sure that this wand will accommodate anybody that picks it up. I think a lot about um, differently abled hands as well um, when I'm making my wands. And so it's very important to me that when you find a wand that it feels like it was meant for you. And so what I'm doing here is I am making sure that there's a, a place for the grip. <laughs> there's a little bit of glue that um, seeped out the side and that's just fine. I'm gonna cover that up anyway. Um, so it's definitely a, a wand now that can be handled by anybody. And I'm gonna double check it. And then I'm just going to add what I think the wand is missing at this point. Um, so I love the idea of natural swirls and organic structures and that this was a wand that was made in a magical forest somewhere and you've just you know it's been stumbled upon and, and it's just like something you've never seen before and actually a lot of people when they see our wands at shows they think maybe it's made out of glass or ceramic or resin or um, you know just anything but not anybody <laughs> no one really says hot glue and it's it's really cool to watch people's faces when they're like this is hot glue no way and, um, and I, I love that and you'll see you know once we paint it and seal it with uh, an acrylic sealer that it just takes on a different finish altogether but here I'm just creating swirls and movement um, with the glue gun one of the things that I have to work on is making sure that my glue doesn't flatten out because 
like everything else it just wants to you know fall down and and flatten out and that's why I'm you'll see me dipping that in the water because that kind of freezes that glue in place I've got a sill pad underneath me it's just a silicone mat um, to protect my work surface in case glue spills and it will um, from time to time and here's the handle I'm pretty much done forming it at this point it feels good and it's ready to be painted so when I paint I use just a matte acrylic and you know in black and um, you know just the cheapest craft paint you can find um, you can use a, I've used a glossy before but I just love the way that it looks when it's all done um, with the matte and it just the colors tend to pop on it more and I use a paintbrush for this just getting into all those nooks and crannies because what I'm doing here is I'm creating the shadows um, that you'll see once all of the paint goes onto the wand and yeah I just paint it <laughs> I don't know what else to say here. Um, just, you know, let it dry. And don't worry, we'll come back. And now we're ready to paint the other half. And so the top half is dried, and I make sure that I haven't missed any spots because it's easy to do. And then just go back through and paint the rest of the wand. Um, when I'm making wands, I usually make more than one at a time. Um, it just is, you know, helps my process to start a wand and, and um, you know, make about three or four at a time. So this was an interesting challenge to make one at a time. And I'm just always checking my wands to make sure that I've gotten everything, that there's nothing that I don't want, you know, hanging around, and then I'll let it dry. So now is the very fun part. So I am often inspired by feathers and birds and seashells and grass and beetles and the ocean and all things natural. And right now I'm choosing the peacock feathers. Um, we used to live across the street from a gentleman who raised exotic birds and I use colored waxes. And we loved that there would be peacocks in our yard and they would just walk through and they're just majestic. And so I've been, I've used acrylic paints before, you know, and I still do, but right now I'm really loving these acrylic waxes and I just apply them with my fingers. Um, and I go back, I go in with the the green and the purple and the blue, and those are my um, my major colors there that I'm using. And what I'm trying to do is just you know give the wand the the colors that it needs in different places, and so they don't you know fight with each other, but they they come together on the wand. And you know so there's not like one block of blue and one block of purple they kind of meld into each other and then I come in with some the metallic colors and that'll be gold and then I've got an espresso brown and then a copper as well and it doesn't look like much right now but <laughs> once they all come together it looks so beautiful it's just magic the, the metallic colors pick up the highlights that I've created um, and then you know the black is still there in the recesses and the colors just sing on the wand you have to make sure that you get the top and the very bottom as well and I just you know it just the wands speak to me and tell me where they need to be different colors um, you know I have an idea in my mind but it's not until I'm actually there painting the wand that I know where I'm going to put the paint and so yeah, the gold is going on and it's just, it makes it magical. It's just, it, it's very eye-catching. I love this part. And here it comes on the copper. And I found copper is just one of those very fun, 
colors that it's, it's just it's universal and it's it, we are connected to it and you know all the metallic um, colors just I really love working with those and one of the neat things about using the waxes is that you can burnish them and just you know as you rub on them they they take on a you know different characteristic um, than you would have ever thought and so if I want something more shiny in one place or um, more subtle, subdued I'll, I'll go back over that and so there I just I'm adding some blue and some purple back because sometimes colors get muddled when you work with them a little too much and and so you have to just you know be aware of what your whole piece is looking like as you go and then just add and um, and move it around until you're happy with it And it, it was really cool having the peacock feathers there in front of me because it was just, you know, the inspiration was, was right there. But I love, you know, beetles and, and flies and dragonflies and butterflies and all sorts of different things. And um, there's so much beauty in nature. And I love to bring that into my wands. And you can see the the swooping structures, sweeping structures, and, and swooping structures. <laughs> and um, you can really see now the shapes that I created earlier. So at this point, I'm ready to seal my wand, and I'm going to use a snell, which is a fish hook on a line of monofilament. Um, I flattened the fish hook out so there's not a lot of um, resistance when I pull it out. I'm looking for a nook or a cranny, someplace that's just black and I'm going to just insert that and give it a little pressure. And what I'm doing is I want to make sure that it hangs well. And that looks good because the next step is we're going to take it over to our sealer. This is a PVC tube pipe that we have um, created a bottom for and a lid for and I use um, a polycrylic sealer and I dip it down in there and use my little push stick I've used it a lot so you can see all the build up there and just submerge it and then I pull that out and we just let the sealer drip down and I've got there's my kitty and I've got a, you know, just a reservoir there underneath um, where all that acrylic sealer can drip. And I just, you know, I've got hooks up there and we let it sit. It takes about an hour for each of the wands to dry. And I usually let them cure for a little bit longer than that. So now that the wand is ready, I'm going to um, just wiggle that snell so um, it comes loose and just pull it out. And I hang them up because that's not something you want looming around your studio floor. <laughs> and it is so magical. Um, these are wands that I love to make. I love creating them. I love seeing people's faces when they find them and when they hold on to them. It's something that really makes my heart sing. Thank you for letting me share this with you. <laughs>